Hi everyone and welcome to my brand new podcast, All or Nothing with Anita Nicole. I'm so excited to share this journey with you as I introduce you to people who share some of their lifelong stories. I hope their stories inspire you and ultimately help you to elevate your life. This has been a lifelong passion of mine, so I really hope you enjoy this podcast. I look forward to the feedback and if you have any questions or comments, please do share. Now it's time for us to elevate together. Hey Chitty! Hey! And thank you for being a guest on my All or Nothing podcast. I am so excited to be doing this with you. Ah! Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. So, for everyone listening, can you tell us a bit about who you are and what you do for a living? Okay, great. Um, So, my name is Chitty, Chitty Ashley, um, and I am a travel entrepreneur. So, um, I own a travel company. Mm -hmm. It's an experiences company, and what we do is we pretty much bring women, um, men, people together um, in bucket list destinations. And so we are hosting these amazing group trips um, around the world, connecting people with other travelers, connecting people who want to expand their network. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, it's just been amazing. And then from there, we started planning more trips for private um, purposes. Um, And yeah, so that's what we're doing right now is just hosting trips, planning trips for people, and I recently just launched the Travel Entrepreneur Club, wow. which is a community for digital nomads, uh, entrepreneurs who want to achieve location independence, financial independence. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, those are the projects that I'm currently working on. Amazing. <laughs> it is so inspiring, the fact that you're 23 years old and have created this business for yourself, curating these trips and traveling all over the world. Before we get into that, can you tell us a bit about what you used to do before creating Chitty Ashley Travels and why you felt the need to change career paths? Of course. So I was actually working at a tech company as a business analyst. Mm -hmm. um, And that was my job was actually quite amazing. I won't lie. I I had a good opportunity. I was living and working in New York, New York, fresh out of college. Yeah, Um, I was earning a good salary. Um, I had unlimited pay time off, so I was traveling every <laughs> chance I could get. Um, but at the same time, you know, for me, that job was never the end goal. Mm. And so I knew that eventually I would have to venture off. I didn't know when, but I knew that I would have to venture off eventually. And so, you know, for me, I was an international student in uh, New York. Yeah. And I always knew that the goal was never to work for someone else mm-hmm. long term. Mm-hmm. The goal was really to gather as much knowledge as I could and then implement that for my own business. Yeah. And so um, when I started Chitty Ashley Travels, which really wasn't meant to be a business, but it came, you know, along that way. Um, yeah, it just it, things just went out of control from there. And, you know, I jumped into that. Um, I left my job in New York uh, last year, February. Mm -hmm. I didn't leave outrightly. So what I did was I um, I started working remotely. So I told my company like, hey, listen, I have this business idea. I have this passion that I, you know, I've been working on. I was shit scared, by the (laughs) way. I was so scared to let them know because I thought they were going to be like, you're fired. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I really thought they were going to fire me. Um, But I had to be honest because at that point I was at work, but I could not focus. Mm. I just, I could not focus. I was so, I was, my mind was always on. Right. It was always somewhere else. And so I had to be honest with them. And I said, Hey, listen, um, you know, my passion is somewhere else at the moment, but you know, I love you guys. I love the community. I love this company and my manager was like that's fine Mm. um you know you can work remotely and you can work more part-time so i renegotiated my contract and then i started working as a contractor yeah um initially and as soon as we renegotiated that contract i was like well there's no reason to be in new york (laughs) (laughs) and so yeah i decided i didn't want to be in new york anymore and i in two weeks from when I told him about this, two weeks after I moved to Bali. So what? packed up my bags, packed up my apartment and moved all the way to Bali. And yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> you have some balls, girl. But um, that's really incredible that your job supported you. Because mm. a lot of times I've heard that when you tell your boss or whoever, like, oh, you're planning on doing something else. Right. Sometimes people try and sabotage you because they just want right. you to work for them. They don't support your dreams. It's amazing that you had somebody right. in right. your corner, you know? I really did. And um, I think think it's also because I was intentional Mm. about the job that I was going to work for out of college I think Mm. a lot of times 
we get so caught up in just finding any type of yeah. job we don't spend enough time with really defining this is the type type of environment that I want to work in. Uh, and so for me, it was clear. And I told them when we were interviewing, like, for me, I want to learn what it takes to run a successful company. Yeah. And my C the CEO at the time when I started the job, he actually took me out for coffee and we started, you know, we would talk. And so every week I would go out for coffee with different people. Mm. Um, I would go out for coffee with the head of finance, with operations, sales, wow. and really learn, you know, what their workflow is like. And the company encouraged that as well. That's so good. Yeah. And so, and they knew I had a passion for travel. Yeah. Um, and I was, I never had to hide that. You mm. know what I mean? Um, and so I'm really grateful that that was a situation. Um, I'm really grateful that that team really supported me because honestly, my manager telling me like, go for it. Yeah. It made such a difference. Yeah. Like it really made me feel like, wow, okay, my thoughts, my feelings, my ideas are validated. Say, yeah. Yeah. And it's it's so important to have managers, to have a network that supports you, that recognizes your passion, Agreed. that can really propel you to that next level. Yeah. yeah. Completely agree. So how did you finally take the leap and initially start the practice of taking people around the world? And mm. did you believe it would be successful from the jump? Honestly, um, so how everything started, let me, <laughs> let's, let's rewind a little bit. So I had been traveling. I told you my job had unlimited paid time off. Mm -hmm. And so I would travel, you know, every few weeks. Um, but I was just doing that for fun, just, you know, just because it was something I love to do and I just yeah. wanted to get away. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wanted to go to Bali. I had been the year before. I really wanted to go again. I asked my friends. No one had the time, the mm. money to come. And so I was like, listen, I'm either going to go by myself Facts. or I'm going to reach out to some of the people that follow me on Instagram because, you know, they like my travels. They might wow. want to travel too. Yeah, and so I... Um, That's the key right there. Right. Go on with the story. That's the key. <laughs> right, and so sometimes you just have to reach out. And I was like, why not meet new people? Like, I need new friends, you know? Like, I want to, you know, expand my network to people who value some of the things that I value. Mm -hmm. And so I put the trip out there. I really just wrote a list of all the things that I loved in Bali. Yeah. And put it all together, posted it on Instagram. I was like, hey, guys, I'm going to Bali come with me and we had 200 signups and what? so from there i was like wow okay this is a thing so then i was like okay well another place i like was thailand so i was like why not do thailand and then i was realizing that this was take you know a lot of work so the initial trips were not to make money yeah i really wasn't profiting off of them mm -hmm. i was just doing them for fun but i was like wow this takes a lot you know i'm liable for people yeah um i'm answering emails i'm collecting payments i'm doing all of that and so that's how the business um came about did i know it was going to be successful um i think i had to believe yeah in myself and once i saw you know, the signups, the energy, the support, I was like, wow, you know, and that really pushed and, you yeah. know, pushed me um, to really invest in that. Um, but it's crazy because my parents are Nigerian. And so uh, when I told them like, hey, I'm quitting my job, moving to Bali <laughs> to travel with strangers, uh, as you can imagine, yeah. <laughs> that <are> conversation, <laughs> right. So, you know, didn't, they were like, what is going on? You know, but I had to just believe that, yeah. you know, it was gonna it was gonna turn out well and it did. So You know, yeah. what you just said is like <laughs> it is so key. Everybody listening, you replay what she just said because you said that you wanted to do something mm -hmm. and your friends kept cancelling on you and so so and so forth, but right. you were still determined to go. Right. So you put out this idea that you had on Instagram and you thought, Well, if I wanna do this, maybe other people wanna mm -hmm. do it too. And you collected over 200 signups, but right. your business was created from a need right. that you wanted to fulfill personally. Right. And you realized other people had friends who were in the same situation. Exactly. And that is crazy. That's why you're so successful, because you've really filled a gap that people mm. were yearning for. Right. And that's, that's really the key to success, I believe. Right. Yeah. And at the time, I mean, I, I didn't realize how big that gap was. Yeah. But I think every successful business, you have to think about what problem am That's, I solving? Can you solve? Right, yes. Right. And so once you have that problem that you know you're solving, 
um, that is what is really going to take you to the next level. You're yeah. guaranteed to build a community from that. And so what we've really done is build a community from people who are tired of flaky that, friends. You're right. <laughs> that is right. diamond energy right there, man. I was watching your first YouTube upload and you stated how in eight months you turned your passion into a multi six figure business. Mm -hmm. Why do you think your business has been so successful in the short amount of time since you began? Right. Um, I mean, you know, as I mentioned, I think it's that we're building a community. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're building a community based on a pro an actual problem. Yeah. Um, and so I think that we have brought so many different people together, mm -hmm. people who can relate to wanting to travel more, people who can relate to not wanting to wait on friends, mm -hmm. people who love to solo travel, but, you know, you want to meet new people, you mm -hmm. want to connect, you want to um, venture beyond your comfort zone. And wow. I think that has really, you know, helped us to, you know, really build our travel tribe yeah uh beyond that i think is also leveraging taking that opportunity taking that momentum and building on that mm. um and when you recognize that you have something valuable i think you really have to use that momentum and propel yourself yeah. um, and so from there we started doing private trips um and i think that really helped us as well but leveraging i think every business owner needs to leverage their superpower you mm. need to know what makes you unique and i think for me last year was a year of self-discovery and mm -hmm. what i figured out was all the years of travel are helping me to inform and advise others yeah right? what to because, do what right. to go i hear that exactly and so that helped me is really to determine okay i have all this knowledge now some people might be going to that same location um, and they might want to know what what should I do? Where should I stay? And yeah. so we're kind of helping them along the way. And so I was able to build a team mm -hmm. pretty quickly um, that of other travelers as well. And so now we have a global team. Um, and really, the premise of planning trips for other people is I wouldn't make you do anything that I haven't personally done um, or that I, something that I wouldn't do myself. Yeah. I wouldn't make you stay somewhere that I haven't stayed yeah. myself or or, you know, a place that I wouldn't feel comfortable in. Exactly. So we really try to think about every single customer and their situation, put ourselves in their shoes, and then plan from there. Right? Amazing. What advice would you give to people looking to start a business of their own regarding startup cost, growing their brand via marketing strategies, mm -hmm. etc., and just gaining overall traction as efficiently as, efficiently as they can? Um, I would honest, honestly say the first and foremost thing is start. Mm. A lot of times we sit, you know, in our nine to fives, we overthink, overthink, overthink. And sometimes you can also over plan. Mm. Um, you you want to gather so much information. You want to say, oh, I, if I reach this and that and then I'll do that. And then you never get there. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's about taking that leap. Mm. And only then, you know, will you can your business even get to the next level, yeah. right? Is once you actually start. For me, I learned so much by doing and mm. making those mistakes. The mistakes are crucial. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as we were growing, we made a lot of mistakes. And I was really like, is this is this what I should be doing? <laughs> like, you know, I, I really, I was so hard on myself and I had to realize like, even big companies like Apple, Nike, yeah. they sometimes get it wrong, yep. you know, and they have, Plenty, plenty, well qualified people making yeah, decisions. And you see them cleaning it up, right? Like, Live for the audience. <laughs> exactly, and they they're still getting things wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I had to say to myself, "I'm gonna get things wrong, and that's fine." Yeah. What I won't do though is allow the same issues to continue to persist. That's and it. so I think you know, get started, mm -hmm. make the mistakes, learn from the mistakes. Mm -hmm. Um, and take those lessons and, you know, make your business better yep. um, in terms of growing your business and taking your business to the next level. Um, I would say one is branding is super important. Mm -hmm. um, really, what is the message that you're sending out to people who are reaching out to your brand? Yeah. Um, what is your overall brand? You know, that brand aesthetic, that brand feel um, and that also translates to how you're treating your customers. Yeah, your mission you know? statement. Exactly. Yeah. And so... You know, that's that's what I would say on that, um, you know. Yeah, do you have any <laughs> tips for marketing? Mm. Marketing for me, I think what really helped us grow, um, one is because I had grown my personal brand. Mm. And I think in this day and age, personal branding is so important. Mm. Um, I think a lot of businesses 
a lot of people want to relate to you. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to identify with a business, but people can identify with an individual. Yeah. Um, and so for me, it helped to grow my personal brand to actually, for people to see like, okay, she's running a travel business, but her herself, she has walked the walk. You yeah. know what I mean? And so then people feel comfortable to trust you yeah. with their money because they know that you are actually about what you say. Yeah. So I would say um, if you're looking to launch a business and grow your business, market your business, market yourself as well. Ah. You know, I would say invest in yourself, invest in uh, mastering your craft. Mm -hmm. If you want to launch a travel company, travel, mm. travel as much as possible. Show people that you, you know, you're living that business, yeah. right? Um, and then I would say from there is get the word out. And yeah. the best way I feel like to get the word out nowadays is social media, having a strong presence. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of um, collaborations with other individuals, getting other people, you know, to spread that yeah. um, word of mouth through social media and beyond. Yeah. Um, and over time, you know, that momentum will pick up where yeah. you'll see yourself growing without you having to do much. Ah, right? that is really key. Um, I think somebody who is also really great at personal branding is Rihanna. Mm, Anything exactly. she attaches herself to exactly. flies off the shelf like hotcakes because people are invested in Rihanna. Exactly. It doesn't matter if it's makeup, trainers, you know, hair bubbles, right. it doesn't matter. But right. yeah, Rihanna could sell water to a well. Exactly. And you, because you've seen her style as well. Yeah. As well. Yeah. She became a fashion icon. So mm. if she's going to sell you clothes, you're going to... buy it, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> because you want that look. You yeah. want that same... You, you trust her trust because you've her. seen her you know, master her, her craft or yeah. wear those looks and yeah. own it. So I definitely, I definitely agree with you on that one. <laughs> that is amazing. What do you think is the hardest part about running a traveling business? And what are some of the key lessons you've learned so far? And then what are some of the best parts? <laughs> Girl, <laughs> let's not even get into it because <laughs> the lessons have been plentiful. Um, last year, as much as we had so many wins, mm -hmm. you know, we also made a lot of mistakes. And, you know, as I said, you're going to make those in business. Um, for me, some of my, um, some of the issues that I ran into running a travel business is burnout. Mm -hmm. Um, and also just managed keeping up with the schedule because, yeah. you know, I, I, there was a point last year where every other week I was in a new country. Mm -hmm. So I'm dealing with time zone changes. I'm dealing with, you know, not having consistency with what I'm eating. Yeah. Um, I wasn't really prioritizing, you know, I was living life on the go. So I wasn't really working out as much. Yeah. Um, and just kind of like my life was just in a suitcase mm -hmm. and I was just constant. I never had that stability. Yeah. And sometimes if you don't have stability in your actual personal life, yeah. it's hard to bring stability to your business. Agreed. And so um, I've had to, and I'm still learning how to, um, establish stability establish structure mm -hmm. in my business and establish structure in my personal life yeah um but it's it's so difficult um it's it's been my biggest challenge i'm still learning till today um and also just work-life balance yeah. has been an issue because it, it's a fine line you know mm. you're traveling you're having fun but you also have to work and yes. so it's that balance of when do I work? When do I say, okay, let me put the laptop yeah, away? It has never really down. Exactly. I exactly. Completely. And then the business is, you know, it's 24 7, 365 days of the year. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sometimes I would feel guilty to just take a break. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> I hate you. It's, it's crazy. And it's like, it's okay to have a passion and also make time for other things. Yeah. Um, and one thing I feel like I needed to have done more of is made more time for friendships, mm. for family. Um, and that's something that's a big goal of mine um, this year. Um, in terms of mistakes, I would say getting help. Mm. I would say get help as soon as you you notice that you are burning out. Ah. Uh, at some point, I was really doing it all. And I don't think that that's healthy for anyone. It's not healthy for your business, too. Yeah. Um, because you're not going to be good at everything. I was doing customer service, managing three email accounts, social media, finance, this, that, and still hosting the trips. And yeah. it, it just got to a point where I was seeing that, you know, it was really affecting and hurting our business and mm -hmm. hurting our ability to keep up. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had to then hire more people. And when you're hiring, you need to be hiring strategically, but hiring people who align with the vision. That's it. Of where, you know, wh who understand what, what you're working towards. Yeah. Um, and I had many mistakes with hiring as well. Oh, God. <laughs> 
Let's not even get into that. I had mistakes with hiring last year. Um, and I those were learning experiences as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, for me, my big goal this year is just to balance it all. Find yes. a way to juggle it all. Um, find a way to prioritize my health. I think as a business owner, in order to perform, mm-hmm. um, you have to, your health has to be yeah, a priority. Well. Right, yeah. exactly. Um, and if your business is going to have longevity, you have to you have longevity True, it would be nice too. if you were alive. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so, so I'm like, now I'm like, I, I'm trying to make a point to actually, first thing in the morning, put the phone away. Don't answer the emails. Don't get sucked up. And get out there, you know, go to the gym <laughs> as much as I dread it. Go to the gym, it's try so to good. eat healthy. And yeah, that's that's it. You right. make me laugh. What would you say is the best part of your business? Um, honestly, because my business is remote mm-hmm. and I made it a point to make sure that we are building a company that is remote. For me, I call it a business with no borders. Wow. Um, and so that means that I can make money if I'm sitting on a beach in the Maldives, that's the goal, um, man. <laughs> right? Uh, regardless of where I am in the world, we can operate business as usual, and so I'm not tied down to any location. I don't have to be anywhere at any point in time unless I'm hosting a trip, mm-hmm. and so for me, that gives me freedom. Yeah, right. And so when you have financial freedom, mm-hmm. when you have location, when you're location independence, for me, that is ultimate freedom. And so that has been the best part is being able to really achieve that. Um, and now the next part is really to be able to grow that, you know? Wow. Right. Chitty is 23, guys. <laughs> Thank you. 23. So you were recently telling me that you purchased some land in Bali oh, to build your first property. <laughs> and it's currently under development. I mean... First of all, congrats. That is Thank such you. an amazing achievement. Thank you. Why did you decide to buy land and build a property instead of purchasing a current one? Mm. And what advice would you give to people looking to buy property abroad regarding how to get started and any roadblocks you've encountered? Mm. Um, I think for me, I knew I wanted to establish myself in Bali. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, I do see myself, you know, I, I juggled between South Africa and Bali, Indonesia, Uh, But Bali is just my happy place. It's It's where my business thrives. It's where I have a community. Um, And it just, I I feel alive when I'm there, you know? And so um, I said, I wanted to, I I see myself being here long term. Um, And every time I go to Bali, I'm staying at these villas. I'm Mm. spending so much money. So I was like, you know what? It's time for me to get my own place. Um, Also, I don't have any kids. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so, honestly, I'm, I'm not a flashy person. You will never catch me in, like, designer, this and that. Mm-hmm. I don't really spend money. I mean, I live right now on less than 10% of my income. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, I want to be able to reinvest. Um, I looked at properties, already um, built properties. I wasn't finding anything that was, you know, making me feel super excited. Yeah. Um, and I spoke to an architect. And the costs were about the same to build versus um, to buy. And I was yeah. like, I might as well, I have time. I might as well then build and yeah. actually make it something that is my dream, my dream home. And so honestly, all of this happened in the space of, I think, what, one month of like finding the land, <laughs> signing the contracts. Everything happened so fast, but um, I'm really excited. I'm so excited for it. Um, it's going to be the first of many, hopefully. Um, I really want to, one of my next projects is really to start investing globally. Yeah. Um, I would say if you are looking to invest globally or invest in property abroad, mm-hmm. uh, make sure you know the area. Yeah. You know, make sure you know the country. Make sure you spend time there. Build relationships. Yeah. Um, do your research. Get legal advice as yeah. well. Make sure you're aware of the laws in place. Mm. With Bali, um, what is very tricky is the laws in place for foreigners. And so... Make sure that you're actually, um, you have someone who can provide you with legal advice to help you get around certain things, yeah. um, to help you navigate that. Yeah. Um, and so that's something that really helped me was the fact that I had been, you know, in Bali for so long, I had built those local connections. Yeah. And that's how I found the land because I kept looking for land and I kept saying, I want rice field views. You know, and I, I, I was not finding anything in the location I wanted with those views. Yeah. And um, one of the people, the um, vendors I work with, he was like, let me take you out. You know, you're you're dealing with all of these, you know, Aussies. <laughs> 
uh, because a, a lot of Australians, they do, they're, you know, they have uh, property companies. He was like, yeah, you know, come hang out with some locals, like yeah. show you what we have. Um, and, you know, that's how I found the land. I met with the landowner. He's a farmer. He's been farming on the, on that land for years. Um, and the land has been passed down. And, mm. you know, I met with the community leader there and you know he we built a relationship and that's so important is to really like know the community know who that you know the land belongs to have those relationships yeah. um and yeah so we went from there and you know now it's in the works i'm super excited about it incredible <laughs> so is this going to be your home or do you want to like rent it out for travelers when they come girl so <laughs> <laughs> originally it was I originally wanted to have it as an investment property. Yeah. Um, and so that I would be renting it out to other travelers. Mm -hmm. But because I'm investing so much so time, much. it's becoming my Your baby. baby. <laughs> I'm really like putting so much into it. I'm like, I cannot see someone else living no, it's in this mine. house. You right. Have the next one. Exactly. <laughs> so for for right now it's gonna be a personal home. Yeah. Um, but it also depends on like, you know, how much traveling I'm doing. Cause if I'm really not there, then True. Yeah, it makes sense. To you know, what's out. the point? But we're looking to actually start building um, in Ubud. So I was, I my the, the land I purchased is in Shangu, mm -hmm. um, but I really love Ubud and I think that that would be a great place to do an investment yeah. property. So by the end of this year, we should um, have started building there as well. You are yeah. killing Thank it, you. girl. So what does investment mean to you? And for us millennials, mm -hmm. do you have any tips and tricks on how and what to invest in and how to build and manage our wealth? Right. Um, that's a great question. I think a lot of people, we, we don't talk about that no. <laughs> a lot, you know, especially amongst uh, millennials. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like a mystery. Yeah. You know what I mean? But people just get there. Right. But how do you get there? Um, I would say for me, investing, before you can even invest, mm -hmm. do you have an emergency fund? Mm. So important. What, what, is, what is your savings account looking like? What is your emergency fund looking like? Um, before you can even think of investing, I was working on actually saving, putting mm -hmm. aside money um, towards different things. And once I built that out, and then I can say, okay, this is what I'm left with. Mm -hmm. What do I want to do with that, right? And you can go many different ways. I specifically chose property because, you know, the value I feel is something that remains constant and appreciates. Yeah. And so I felt that was the most secure thing for me. Mm -hmm. But you know, it might be different for different people. Also, yeah. because I'm in the travel industry um, and because um, I work with a lot of clients and we're placing them in villas. And I was like, I'm placing them in other people's villas. Mm. Why not own my own? Exactly. You know, there are not a lot of black um, owned villas, properties in Bali. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, why not get my foot in the door? Yeah. And so that's why I made that stride to do that. So for me, I feel like property is always a safe bet as yeah. much as you can say safe yeah with investing i i like that i feel like another way that i would like to invest more in the future is investing in causes that i believe in in mm -hmm. terms of investing in other intra entrepreneurs and businesses and yeah. so that's my long-term goal is reinvesting um in businesses that i believe in that yeah. i want to see move for further wow. um maybe purchasing some type of stake in different companies i think that that would be um, my my approach on investing. Wow, indeed. <laughs> so with all the traveling that you do and being part of Team Black Girl Magic, you know we're pretty Woo serious about our hair care. <laughs> how do you take care of your hair in places that culturally do not have a lot of black people? And how do you find great hairdressers in the local area? Ooh, this, is, <laughs> this is a question because it is so hard to imagine. keep up with yourself while you're traveling. Um, let me be honest with you. Um, for a long time when I was living in Bali, mm -hmm. I would travel to Malaysia to get my hair braided. Okay. So I would literally leave Bali, fly to Malaysia, braid my hair, and then come all the way back to Bali every single time I wanted to braid my hair. Oh my goodness. Because there were no black, um, you know, I didn't know of any black owned um, hair salons mm -hmm. or black braiders in Bali. Yeah. At the moment I knew I could live in Bali was when I found an African, uh, he's a, a man, what? he's an African man that lives in Bali and does hair. And you will not believe how excited I was to find this guy. 
I told him, I was like, thank you so much. For like, real. that was when I knew I could actually stay yeah. in Bali long term because it, the struggle. Yeah. The, it's such a struggle. I find a lot of, I try to do like hashtag, hashtag searches. Yeah. So I will do like hashtag hair braider Thailand. Or, yeah. But it's so difficult. Um, I do, I usually, now I stick to protective styles. Yeah. Um, and that usually takes me a month. Exactly. That's good. Yeah. And then I can try to find a way to branch off somewhere um, where I know there are hair braiders. But it's yeah. so difficult. <laughs> I can imagine, girl. <laughs> what does self-care look like to you? And how do you manage to balance both your professional and personal life? For me, I, I've realized that self-care is so much more than going to the spa mm -hmm. and getting massages and facials and all of that because yep. I was doing that and I still felt like what is going on yeah. with me you know and for me in 2020 self-care is having balance mm -hmm. discipline mm -hmm. um being organized having some type of structure I think that is ultimate self-care at the end of the day because you can prioritize all the things that you love to do, you're not feeling constantly burnt out. Yeah. Because you can you can have those massages and all of that, and you're still coming back from that. Yeah. To just you know because it's not internal. Exactly. Work. Yeah. Exactly. And so for me, I'm working on incorporating more discipline, incorporating mm -hmm. more balance. Saying okay. I've done how many hours of work? I'm putting the laptop away. Yeah. I'm gonna spend some time. I'm gonna call my family. I'm gonna call my friends. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's how I'm that's how I'm doing it now. Um, it's still a work in progress because <laughs> it's a struggle. I hear you go. It is so important though that you have to cultivate those relationships with your friends and mm -hmm. family as much as your business relationships because mm -hmm. they are as important. Right. Like those are the people that are there for you when things are not going well. Right. And those are the people that you celebrate your wins with also. So, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's important to be so very important. Well I completely agree. To anybody that is listening to this that has any fears or doubts about traveling alone, joining one of your next trips, or Ooh. being anxious about starting <laughs> their business in 2020, what would you say to them? Honestly, I would say take a chance on yourself. Mm -hmm. Um Take a chance on yourself. I think that is so important. We often underestimate ourselves. And I will say this. What is the best that can happen? Um, I think we always focus on what's the worst that can yeah. happen. We're always thinking, oh, if I do this and this is going to happen. No, what is the best that can happen? Yeah. Um, and I had to think about that when I wanted to take a leap of faith and travel by myself. When I wanted to start my own business. Yeah. When I just wanted to venture out, what is the best that can happen for me that ended up being growing my business to the level that it is. Mm -hmm. um, it ended up being self-discovery because through travel, I really started to find myself. Yeah. As I talk to other people from different cultures, I'm realizing what I value. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, I spent so many months traveling by myself. Mm -hmm. I just became so comfortable in myself. So yeah. those are the best. That's the best that can happen. Um, and so I would say, what is the best that can happen? Think about what the best that can happen is and go f with that. You yeah, know? lead with that. Exactly. Yeah. Obviously, you have to take the necessary precautions in every, um, you know, scenario. But if you are so hung up on why not, why not, why not? Um, you're all, you're going to stay stuck in that. Mm. And you're always going to have that deep seated feeling of regret. Yeah. Yeah. And. In, in this day and age, I just don't feel like there's any room to have regrets. I agree. Right? And anything is possible. We've seen people creating careers from social media. Right. Like, you can literally change your life right. online, believe it in yourself, and just taking a chance. Right. There's everybody. kids out there that are making millions Stop it. on YouTube just <laughs> reviewing toys. This is five, six-year-olds, you know, that my cousins <laughs> watch. I'm like, who is this? And they're like, it's so-and-so. Right. And it's crazy. You can build a career. I, I mean, in Bali, I had the privilege of meeting so many different creatives. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm meeting health coaches. Um, I'm meeting all sorts of people just really making money from their passions yeah. and taking a chance on themselves. Yeah. And I, I was so shocked. I was mm -hmm. like, there is a community out there. And 
honestly you always think it's impossible because you don't know mm. you really don't know and you need to expand your network yeah you know what yeah, i mean yeah. expand your mind because there's people out there that are doing it literally you need to find that community that can support you agreed um and i think that's so important and so um i would say just think about what's what the best that can happen is yeah and go go from there yeah the <laughs> options are limitless Oh, Chidi, as a young entrepreneur and business mogul, truly stepping out on faith and actively living your best wanderlust life, <laughs> what does it mean to you to truly give your all or nothing? Oh, I love this question. I love this question. I was always telling you I absolutely love the name of the podcast. Thank you. Um, for me, giving it my all is knowing that I am wholeheartedly pursuing my passion mm -hmm. Um, I'm working every day towards something that I love mm -hmm. to do. Um, and that's giving it my all like, because that is what is driving me yeah. because at the end of the day, it's so easy to quit. There's yeah. the world is littered by people who start and give up. Mm. But when you have a purpose and you know, your purpose for yourself, you've taken that time to reflect on yourself and what you want. Yeah. Um, and you're pursuing that actively. You're waking up every day, excited about yeah. what you're doing, the people you're going to meet. You. Exactly. Um, it's so much bigger than mm -hmm. me. And so, um, now that's what, that's what gets me going. That's what keeps me wanting to give my all. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's me. I think pursuing your passion is really what ignites that flame. And, yeah. And then you have no choice. You have to give your all. <laughs> oh, shit. I can speak to you all day. But right. thank you so much for your gems, your wisdom. Mm. Just dropping knowledge for us all. Thank you so oh, much for having me. I'm really excited about this opportunity to ah. come sit and chat with you. Hey. Right. Thank you, girl. I appreciate you so much. And bye, everybody. And we'll see you next episode. Right. Bye. <laughs>